All right, so we recently got a plate from RTS. We purchased this plate, they didn't send it to us. Like everything else, we purchased the stuff that we want to shoot. That way there's no bias in it. Um, what we're excited about to see today uh, is one, steel has been phenomenal that we've seen in the past for taking rounds, but the spalling has not been very great. RTS now has a spalling material uh, that they're putting on here. We're gonna go through some uh, 193s, 62 grain 556. Five, We're gonna do a 308 and a 308 AP. And then we have a special EPR 556 five, uh, penetrating round that we're gonna try it again today. But y'all wait, we'll see. All right, so I'm here with Woody today. Woody is a very big skeptic when it comes to steel armor. Uh, and a lot of like a lot of other people out there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this up in a box. So anything that we shoot into this, it's gonna throw a shrapnel out if there's gonna be any spalling out there. Um, I am not a believer in steel armor. I believe that this is going to, uh, I believe it's gonna perform like a drag queen in a biology class for this test. So uh, if this passes this, I'd be extremely impressed. All right, we're gonna, all right, so we're gonna shoot with a 55 grain out of an 11 and a half inch barrel, 556. Five, see how it does. Going hot. All right, so the 5.5 five, uh, grain didn't do anything. It didn't delaminate. It did pull some of the spa, uh, anti spalling coating out of there, but we are shooting out of an 11 inch barrel. We're going to go to a 16 inch barrel because that's going to kick it about 200 feet per second faster. We have a 55 grain and 5.56 five, and a 16 inch barrel. This will be moving a little bit faster. Let's see what it does. One hot. All right, so we've got the second round, one here, one here. Uh, the padding, the, the anti-spalling material is still holding up. We do have some spalling on the outside away from the body, which is, you know, to me, it's better. It's pulling it away from the body and it's getting out. Um, yeah, I, I would have to agree. Um, I was expecting this box to look like SpongeBob after the first round. And uh, we'll flip it over a little bit right here. And you can see with that plate sitting flat against the back, our spalling is going out and at an angle. Now, mind you, this is also worst case scenario. We're shooting this at zero degrees. We're not shooting it at the angle, which is how the NIJ also tests their plates. Uh, worst case scenario. So again, as you can see, the small peppering in the, that, that we're getting from that spalling is moving away from the body. Um, so, so far, so good. All right, let's try 62 grain. Let's see how it works. 62 grain, 16 inch barrel, 556. Five, if we're going to get a lot of spalling, this is where you're going to get it. Going hot. Right. Sixty-two grain, five five six, pop right here. We have no back form, back, back face deformation, deformation. Uh, there is no added or anything shrapnel size inside of the box. No spalling. Uh, yeah, we'll flip it over again just to kind of add to it a little bit. You can see our same pattern that we have before. Uh, nothing added to it. Um, and again, I'm going to reiterate how with the 55 grain, it pushed it away from the body. Um, even with the M855, uh, we're still not getting anything significant. I'm big mad right now. I, I want to see this plate fail so badly. And uh, so far it hasn't. So 855s, because they've got a steel core inside of them, a mild steel core, will really get the most amount of spalling you're going to get out of a round. Um, so I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen any extra. Uh, the next round will be a military grade 855A1. Y'all stay tight. Mm. So we have the new military 855A1 round. If you've never seen one of these rounds, that is a hard steel core uh, bullet. <laughs> this is a phenomenal round. And if this stops, it's gonna be pretty impressive. Going hot. So the EPR round went right here, right center mass of the plate. And there is one minute dimple right here. You probably can't even catch this on film. I would say it would be a 64th. I would say, yeah, about a 64th. That is very impressive. Uh, what's your thoughts? Um, well, I'm, I'm still big mad. I wanted to see this plate <laughs> fail. Um, I didn't notice any more marks on here to indicate any more spalling. 
Um, he did pick up one right over there in the corner, but again, we're, we're talking a good six inches away. And um, so even hitting it directly is sending any spalling directly out of the plate, which is a lot what we'll see out of ceramics as well too. Um, depending on the model, I, I know you did some previous tests on the RMAs and it was it was spitting out ceramic oh, pretty yeah. good out yeah, of yeah. it. Um, so I, I'm extremely impressed. I, I can't believe this plate hasn't died yet. I'm not to the point where I want to stand in front of him and let me shoot him with or let him shoot me with it, but uh, I, I'm just I'm kind of blown away right now. All right, let's go to 308 and let's uh, put some big rounds in it. All right, so what we got here is a 122 grain steel case ammo, uh, 762 by 39, with uh, shooting it out of a Zastava AK. Uh, Y'all forgive my makeshift sling; I hadn't my sling hadn't come in yet, but we're gonna see. That, that, that sling's pretty Russian. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see what she does. After shooting his uh, Zastava ZPAP. Uh, 762 39 122 grain you can see where well we believe that that round entered right here and exited through this side over here uh, we're not exactly sure there's a little bitty dimple right there where well, I'm thinking that round impacted and it kind of sent a little shrapnel to the left and right and that's um, just the fourth round that we've put in this plate yes um, minor back face deformation uh, we did notice um, a little bit of spalling, some new spalling right here. Um, pretty good chunk. Um, it is, you know, going almost 90 degrees on this one. So it, it's going more out to the side. Um, but more importantly, and this is, this is where my mind's at on this. If we look up here, here's your chin up here and your neck, we're still clean. And that's the biggest part to me uh, because that's, because we've got the plate counter, counter tanner up to us. And that would be the concern. That's right. All right, let's try some uh, 308s. M80 round, 147 grain, coming out of a 16-inch barrel at 30 feet. Next round will be this EPR armor-piercing round. Going hot. All right, three, uh, all right 308 M80 round, uh, mild steel core, uh, military use. We do have a little bit of back face deformation in here. And we're also getting our rounds way close into this, this unsafe zone, you know, where we're, we're doing like a three inch grouping. Um, but it's, it still didn't pop it. Uh, we only have one added piece of spalling here uh, that came out of that. Uh, you know, I, I'm still impressed. I'm still impressed. Uh, let's go ahead and try the EPR round. Uh, if this doesn't pop it, I don't know. All right, so this is the military's new M80 A5 steel round. Uh, if you have never seen one before, they're very, very deadly. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot this plate out of a 16 inch barrel, 30 yards. Going hot. All right, let's see if it popped it. can't believe it it still didn't pop it wow. uh, it did take off the this cork board material that they use in here that's been really working really well but that look is at, cork isn't it it is cork it's pretty neat does that kind of absorb some of that well it's taking that spalling out of it gotcha look at here that military armor piercing round is stacked right now to the x ak-47 and within one inch of the original m80 round Look at these groupings that we're putting in here. We need to, we are, we are way too good on our groupings. Um, and here is the back, amazing part. <laughs> it didn't wow. hardly move. It. If this would have been any other plate out there, it would have definitely failed. So I'm thinking this is from the plate hitting the pressure. That's correct. All right, so what's kind of neat about this is we put this board on the back side of it as well to see what kind of pressure this is doing. That EPR round did has some pressure against it. And we've noticed that when we shoot other things, uh, the plates flip out and they jump around. That would have probably hurt really bad, but you would have lived. You definitely would have lived through that, which is very impressive. All right, the only thing that we can do now is, is there, was there a lot more spalling here? 
Um, it looks like we have a couple more spots over here. That was our AK round where the spalling hit it at. On this side, we're still clean. Um, but again, more importantly, up top, your chin's over here, your jugular. Um, still clean as a whistle up top. So what do you think? I think uh, I'm beyond impressed uh, for for a steel. I think that uh, they're definitely doing a really good job using that cork material as an anti-spalling material. Because let's be honest, the reason why none of us have liked steel before is because of spalling. And uh, I've watched multiple tests on YouTube where the spalling was really bad, but I've not seen an RTS plate tested. So I'm extremely impressed. You know, I think that would, would make this better. You know, they got this cork board in there. If they would wrap it in like a duct tape, or if they would have put like a level three A salt armor on the on the outside of it, sure. I think all your spalling goes away. Absolutely, sounds like something we should do in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next round is going to be a forty five seventy. That's the biggest gun that we have. We're gonna give it a shot. All right, so here we got the forty five seventy. We're gonna be shooting a three hundred and fifty grain red tip to see what it does. Hey, should we set that other piece of that plate? Okay, so. We hit, I'm guessing right here with that 4570. I mean, you know, you know, at this point, that doesn't even matter. You know, we're, 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 we're way, way close on all these rounds. And uh, now, without the padding on it, holy smokes, look at the shrapnel. That spalling would have done, that, that would have been pretty hateful. What do you think, Woody? Salt and pepper, man. Um, for that test that you just saw, we just had the what was left of the spalling coat, which was really just the rubber coat sitting in front of it. So it, it we'll, we'll call it no protection whatsoever. And as we expected to see, and it's kind of funny, before we did this video, we had another box lined up to do this test with, uh, but we got a little carried away on these steel plates over here, and we spalled that box to death, so we had to improvise. Um, so this is what we would expect though, without any kind of protection whatsoever against spalling. Um, it, it is salt and pepper. All right, so we have the 4570. Uh, now we're going to be doing a 325 grain hollow point at uh, this steel plate without any kind of spall protection. Stop, uh, stop again. You can show. I'll save going hot. <laughs> I need to, is there another next round? All right, so we have the 4570. This time we're going to do the 325 grain hollow point out of it. Um, it's a big old guy right there, plate or no plate. I do not want to be in front of this. So, bear with me while I chamber this round. All right, going hot. <laughs> the shrapnel blew the paper off. All right, Spud, where do you think that uh, that round hit at? You know, uh, I'd say right here. It gets my vote too. Um, as you can see, our target over here, um, he, he's, he's adios. His shoulder's gone. He's out of the fight. Um, also, as well as our cardboard. Mind you, there's no spall protecting, no rubber coat, nothing left of it. Um, I am seeing a few extra spots where there's some spalling, but um, we're just having fun at this point. We, <laughs> we could absolutely expect that. Yeah, so, you know, this is why it's so important to have spalling material on these plates because they you will it will kill you. It can kill you. Absolutely. Now, I don't know how the Russians been doing it for so long because they they use steel plates to this day at, with an anti, without spalling. I guess they just get hit in the juggling and they're told to get back up and keep fighting. Yeah, right? that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Power in numbers. <laughs> yeah, you just keep going. Absolutely. I, I'm extremely impressed. This has been an absolute blast and I appreciate you having us on here as well to, yeah. to tear up some steel. This is where steel goes to die and where I guess any kind of armor goes to die. So, And I want to say to everybody out there, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, we pay for this stuff. This stuff comes out of our pocket. And any kind of help from y'all would be great. And we hope to make more. All right, Nick, what do you think? How do you, how do you feel about it? Man, for the price point of it and what we threw at it, I am highly impressed. Um, nothing actually went through. Um, your, your back force de deformation right here. We stacked the bullets really, really tight. And it is so minute here. Uh, and, you know, these are really close AP rounds really being stacked up on one another. $200 RMS. And, again, we're not being paid by RMS to do this. We pay for our own stuff. 
and weighs 7.125 pounds, which is about a pound, a pound lighter than any of those ceramics made by RMS or uh, uh, RMA or uh, HESCO. HESCO. HESCO's eight pounds too, isn't it? Not too sure on that one. But uh, HESCO 4400s are eight pounds. Eight pounds, yeah, that's what I thought. And the, your RMAs are 8.9 pounds. So y'all make a decision. Uh, write it in the comments, would you want to see us shoot next?